rolling right now? Okay. You want to close that door just a little bit because... That's okay, that's fine. We'll do the best we can. Okay. Let me see if we can get this tape past the leader here. See if I can get it to pick up my voice a little bit. Make sure everything's recording. All right, I believe I will start this off by saying that today is November the 21st, 1988, and we're here at the Oklahoma Historical Society, and we're going to do an oral history interview with Mr. Dr. Lloyd E. Church. Beg your pardon, sir. Dr. Lloyd E. Church. Okay, doctor. A member of the Historical Society. Are you a lifetime member, sir? No. I'm just glad to be a member. Member? I just the came Oklahoma from. Historical. I just came for before, before you kept talking. I just came from over the other building where I have a lot of. I have 13 cubic feet of work over there in that archives. Uh, your papers and collections are mm -hmm. over at the ODL. I mean yeah. the Oklahoma Department of Library. 13 Hollywood? feet of them. 13 feet. And then feet. I've got more that the people in Arkansas have got to, that I have brought back to me yet. My goodness. I hope maybe you'll think about us too when you're depositing the rest of those papers. We sure would like to have some of your materials here. I'm making a note about these collections so that if someone asks us, we'll know where to send them to. Now, um, uh, first, well, may I start off by telling you something like this? Uh, I'm going to talk, talk a little bit. You don't need to put it down. Do what you think about it. about Marley Days. All right. Um, I'm the oldest of ten children. I'm born in 1890, August 28, 1896. I'm born at Cherokee Strip, OT, Oklahoma Territory, 1896. And I lived there until I was ten years old. And my father was from Iowa. He liked to grow corn. And uh, he didn't, he, he, as soon as he could, he proved up on his farm and wanted to go to another area of Oklahoma where he could raise corn like he raised in Iowa. And he did. He comes to Sealing, Oklahoma. He bought 320 acres of land and uh, it rented a quarter section of Indian land, which had a house on it we lived in for a while, on the North Canadian River. It was close to North Canadian River. And then then I became a student at Sealing Schools. Sealing Schools, Sealing Oklahoma Schools. We lived on a farm two and a half miles east of Sealing. And that's where I grew up to manhood. And uh, those early days, we lived in, really I was born in a cave. There wasn't no, nothing but a cave. In a cave? Right. The next home was a half dugout to start with. In a half dugout. I would like to just talk to you kind of sure, a lot of things just you should right put down so we make it out. Could I ask you one question? All you want to. Was there, a, what was the closest settlement or town to where you were born? Closest settlement, uh -huh. Augusta, Oklahoma. None of there now, but a year after I was born, or about that time, Carmen came into being, and I remember seeing the first Orient Railroad come through there. Oh my goodness! I went town and watched it. We lived a mile north. Another thing, first day I went to school, I remember it the day I went well, to school. Tell me, tell me about it. My neighbor boy, who older than I am, came and walked to school in a mile, and a, a mile south to school. My mother had fixed a dinner bucket for me, of course. And when I got down there at noon, they let out noon for. I thought they would go. I started to go home, take my little bucket and drive on down. And the, this man who was with me at that time come and got me and brought me back. I remember my teacher trying to teach me to write, taking a slate, a pencil, and a slate, and trying to rip. Pearl Halstead was her name. Her husband was a butch, had a butcher shop there at that time. 
So that was in nine. Let's see, I was that'd be in nineteen oh two. First day of school. Nineteen oh two. Do you remember the name of the school? Do you remember the name of the school? Carmen High School. Carmen, Carmen Schools. Carmen School. Carmen School. And we had one teacher in eight grades. How did she manage to teach? She managed to teach. She managed us to write. She managed to taught us to be good. She was the most wonderful thing in the world. Eight, had a whole room, one room, eight, to eight grades. How many students? I would say 30, 40, something like that. How did she handle uh, the rest of the grades while one particular I class was learning something? I don't recall how it was, but I remember taking my hand in the slate pencil and showing me how to write. And what she, sort of things did your mother send for your lunch in your lunch bucket? I'm really curious about well, that. Well, I don't remember, but I know it could have been cornbread or <laughs> well, biscuits, <laughs> something like that. Always, always pork, you know. We had pork. We had we killed pork, chickens. Uh, we we didn't buy any meat in anywhere, you know. We just we, your, uh, we ate what we raised. Did your mother have to preserve these foods like oh, the meat? Oh yes, she always put up lots of fruit and vegetables. Big did, gardens, orchards, that's when they established an orchard. How did she preserve her meat? Uh, Winter time, we hung, hung the pork outside, but the salt, they put everything down in salt pork in big jars. Uh -huh. That's how I kept the meat, the pork, salt, salted in mm -hmm. the jars. Well, how about beef? Did you have to? No, we didn't. My dad never did. We only had milk cows. My dad never did. We never had beef until I got grown, really. How many times a year did you have to slaughter, say, the pigs, uh, chickens, of course, very frequently, but the well, pigs in order to I don't remember, but for the we always, in the fall of the year, when it began to get cold, we butchered hogs. And uh, we, we, we put those away in salt, salted, you know, put mm -hmm. them away in salt. Yes. But in the wintertime, sometimes on we did have some beef or something like that. We'd hang it up on windmill. It'd stay there for the cold weather, you know. But as far as the food, uh, we had a high, a high food. We lived, but I don't know how. But it, we had gardens. We had lots of chickens. And you had a you had a large family. You grew up in a large family, didn't you? Oh yes, ten. I the oldest of ten. Whenever, when your when your father did slaughter, or when you did slaughter in the fall, how many pigs would you have to kill to last you all through the well? The year? I, I, the neighbors would come in, they helped each other, and I don't know, they'd kill two or three hogs, and then each one of them would take one home, and however they worked it out. But the neighbors usually gathered to help do that. I see. I mean, there was no other way, you know, to get along those days. We helped each other. That's and true. If you if you Oh, the man day's work, you let him have it. You, you never let him, you always let him have it back. People were honest. We were taught not to to swear. We were taught not to cheat. If we got licking at school, we got one at home. We wasn't allowed to lie to anybody. We had to be, we had to be nice to people. And I, we I had wish to, they and taught and more of that these days, you and know. And we had to be so careful with our clothes. We had Sunday clothes. When we come back from Sunday school, we had to put them away till the next Sunday. And we'd have been barefoot in the summertime because our shoes was hard to get. We never threw any paper away, a nail or anything else. Everything was saved. How long was the school year? How, how long did you go to school? You went to school nine, nine months. months. Well, you know, my, our folks really wanted their kids to get a good education. Most of them didn't have an education, you know. They wanted their children to be educated. My father and mother, they'd get me or us kids ready and take us to school when it's bad weather. And if we got licking at school, we got one at home. We wasn't lie. And uh, those days, quite often, we had the minister on Sunday for, for dinner. We always had to go out and run down chickens to have chicken <laughs> Did your mother cook on a wood stove? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, what was your favorite dish that your mother would cook on that wood stove? I don't know. She was a good cook, but she always, she always cooked a lot. She had a lot of everything for us. She cooked a lot. She always had cake, pie. 
How did, do you have any idea how she managed to regulate the heat in that stove? No, I don't. But I know this, she'd have to go out in the field and help my father, and she'd leave me to take care of the kids and watch the bread. I'd watch the bread bake, watch, take care of the bread baking for them. I had to watch, keep the wood in the stove. Uh -huh. There's no coal, it was wood. Uh -huh. And, uh, and I, I'd, I'd bake the bread and take care of the kids while she, she's out helping my father in the field. How long would it take to bake the bread? Seems to me like it was about an hour. I don't recall exactly. How many loaves would she bake at a time? I can't recall, but mm -hmm. it, it, should, it should have been. Well, Several. at that early days, there wasn't too many children, you see. As, uh, I, I, my, my time goes back to when, even when I left home, I still had a little baby at home, a brother or sister. Where, I think you probably told me this, but I'm going to ask you again. Where in that number of children, did you say ten children? Yes. Where in that number of ten children were you born? I was the highest. You were the oldest. Most. And this is one of my sisters with me now. There's only four of us live, five of us live in. Five of us are dead. It's wonderful that five of you are still here, though. That's yeah. wonderful. Um, after, well, let me ask you this. I know you must have had, besides baking the bread, you must have had other chores that you had to do for your dad or for your mother. What other sort of things did you have to do on the farm? Well, I had to feed the cows and the horses and chickens, gather the eggs, put out the, hang out the clothes, and... Uh, did you ever have to milk? Oh yeah, I had to milk cows, you bet. Um, I had to feed the chickens and hogs every day. How many milk cows did your father have? Really, well, two, two or three. And that provided all the milk? Oh for yeah, the we had to have it. Did he? Then did we he, had, later on we had, we, 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 had, we lived on that milk, but later on we got a, a cream separator. Oh! And then that was big time. <laughs> oh yes! We run that cream separator, and then there was my mother, would write out what she wanted from town. And she'd put a bucket or two bucket of eggs in, in a buggy. And I'd hitch up old May, we call her, a gentle horse. And I was just a little kid. And she'd give me those eggs. And I'd drive that horse to town a mile. And I'd take her, have them come out and get the eggs. And she had a dewbell there. What they wanted to say to that eggs. And went in and I got the groceries that she wanted on that dewbell. And if there was money left, well, I got to do bill back that much. But I, I did chores like that. Actually, I did all those things. Goodness, thank you. Um, uh, I assume that you graduated from high school. No. You did I want to tell you something. That's been a handicap to me. I, I made two races of Congress in my life, but I had never had education. I knew it. But if I got elected, First thing I'd done, I got to Washington, I get me a speech te teacher. I made that there. But here's what happened. My folks had adversities the time I was growing. And he, my father went broke. But in the early in the school days, see now, I'm getting off the track. Oh, I, I, that was part of my my work. That's part now. And going to school, I only had, I got in the 10th grade. But in the, in the 10th grade, I, my, I, I was first, wait a minute. When I, my father had to have these verses, we moved to New Mexico, Roy, New Mexico. I lived out there two years. I went to school out there. Too. I came back to Sealing, and um, I went to Scott, one year high school. And then the next year, I took the, I got, I bid and got the janitor's job, twenty dollars a month for my thirteenth year of school, two years, two uh, six room schoolhouse with two stories, and I was the janitor for a whole year. And my folks had moved into town that by that time, it's town. I'd get up at four o'clock in the morning, go down to that school, and get the, the the stove all heated up and cleaned up and swept up. And then at four o'clock I'd run home. Uh, well, first I get through at the school. I'd go home, get clothes, and then nine o'clock I'd be back to school. Four o'clock I'd go home, get dressed, come back, and do my cleaning up as much as I could the rest of the day. 
But that, I, I got by with school by getting that twenty dollars a month. Then, two years after that, I worked in a drugstore for a doctor. Long hours, five, five six o'clock in the morning to seven, eight, nine. And just the doctor and I had the business. But we, he was pretty had pretty busy, and I was pretty busy. And uh, so I got cheated out of an education, and I've always known it. What what caused your father's adversities? Why? Um, uh, he, what he happened? Got into some oil deals and some stuff like that. He was a good farmer. Uh -huh. and that's all he knew was farming. He best farmer you, you ever saw. Had good land. He could raise anything. But he got messed up in some oil leasing. That, that ruined him. Now the rest of the family, we had a hard time getting along. I can imagine that was very difficult. Yeah, it was. Uh, after you say you worked uh, during those the period of time you would have been in high school, you worked in the in the, the drugstore. Drugstore. After I got out of the tenth grade, I didn't after, go back after, to school anymore. Okay. What what sort of things did you do in that drugstore? Oh Lord, I had a, I had a soda fountain to take care of and uh, sweep and clean it out and sell drugs and, and in the winter time uh, in the summertime cut ice to keep the ice cream soda fountain going and i worked that by myself how long did you work there two years two, oh, two years his sister's with me today worked after i left school she lived at the same place she just sort of took but over a different where you man, left different off. owner uh -huh. um and where did you go after you, what did you do after you worked at the drugstore? Where did you go then? I started the dental school. The dental school? Yeah, and the doctor, get, I saved a little bit of money, and the doctor told me he'd help me a while, and he did. He was an alcoholic. Was this a medical doctor, or was Medical doctor, okay. yeah, from Tennessee. And he was, a, uh, he was a, he was a, he, he was, a drinker, you call him a drunkard, but he was a good doctor, but he's alcoholic. He drank. I'd order, at that day and time, we, we had to order. I, I, I remember statehood when we had loons, saloons, you see. Uh -huh. But later on, we had prohibition. Well, these two years, I, or, I ordered the, the beer and the, and the liquor and everything for this doctor. He wanted this, he wanted the alcohol. And he had some friends, they wanted beer. And I'd order barrels of beer and two gallons of alcohol every two weeks. That's quite a habit. Mm -hmm. I would do that. My and, goodness. Uh, and that doctor and then a dentist from Tologa, he, Dr. Maddox, he thought I was great. I wanted to be a doctor. That's what I planned to be. But I saw, I would, went with this doctor even after I closed the drugstore at night, get out in the blackjacks or way out and to have something, and then maybe not get back till daylight. And I, I decided I didn't want to be a doctor. So I studied hard. dentistry. Uh -huh. What was the name of the doctor that you worked for? In Dr. The Fox. Dr. Fox. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't hate to say in print what I told you about I the understand. alcohol in this. I understand. Uh, what, now, uh, and you say you went from the drugstore to dental school. Where did you go to dental school? Sir? Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City Dental College. And how long were you there? I was there three years, but to get in, I took quite what I could from New Mexico school and senior school together. And I didn't have enough to get into college after I got up there to Kansas City. So the president told me if I would go to manual training high school at night till I made up those units, I could get in college. And I did that. And then when I got into dental college, I worked my head off in different things, many different things, different ways. I was worked in telegraph office. I delivered telegrams. I was night clerk in a hotel. And uh, I've done everything I could to get through us, through college. What was the time period on this, sir? When did you start dental college? Do you have in 1916. One? In 1916. And graduated in 1919, three years. What kind of effect did World War One have on the students in your school? I, enlist, I enlisted on World War One in 1917 in the medical corps. And in, in that same year, no, I was just in 1960, 1970, I was it, when the world started? Uh, yeah, I believe it was, yes. Sir. Well, when it started, they put all of, we dentists, in by barracks, and all of the dentists that got, I had, uh, hadn't got out yet to see the go to the army. And all those that had been sent to the army, they sent them back to school. And they built barracks, there was two schools there, two schools of dentistry. 
Each one of them had barracks. They built, put, we students in them, put us in army clothes, and we were regular soldiers. And we wore those uniforms and trained. And, in, and if the war would have lasted three months longer, I would have been called to duty as a first lieutenant. I see. Where did you, where did you train, sir? Where did you take your basic training and all that? On the streets of Kansas City. They built the, built the big things right in town. My goodness. And, we, and I took a training on the streets of Kansas City. For goodness sake. After, uh, after you got out of the Army, what happened to you then? What well, did you do then? The first thing I done, they gave me $60. $60? And I, and I was out of clothes. Now, downtown, I had a, I went watching the store, had a suit of clothes I liked. <laughs> and I spent that sixty dollars to get that suit of clothes. Oh. And when I put that first suit on, it's winter time, you know, yet it, it just uh, felt like I had a dress on them. <laughs> my legs got cold, air <laughs> up from me. I can imagine after being used to the uniform and <laughs> everything wrapped up and everything. Yeah. You know, for goodness sake. What happened then? I mean, did you go back to dental school or had you already graduated from dental oh, school? Oh, I stayed in dental school. I never The quit. whole time. Yeah, the, the whole, whole time. time. I, I delivered telegrams. I did everything I could uh, to make a living. When I got out of school, I owed $1,300. It took me a long time to pay it back. I imagine that's quite a sum of money for that time. Yeah. And you, did you say you graduated in 1919? Yes. And what happened to you then? What did you do then? I went right straight home to Sealing. I had a, a man from Sepulpa came up there and asked the doctor. And he said, he said I want the best dentist you got up here. And he said, all right, I'll give him. He gave me. He was going to take me home with him, and when I got through, and when he when he's through at his office, he's going to give it to me. I forgot his name even. But anyway, I hadn't seen my brothers and sisters for so long. I wanted to go home. I went home, and, and the doctor there wanted to get away to the dentist. He said, if you'll give me $325, I'll let you have more. So I, I wanted to stay and see with my brothers and sisters. So I, I practiced in the ceiling there. And in that time, I went... I, 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 I practiced two days at Fireside, two days in Sealing, two days in Kent, Oklahoma. I see. For two or three years, and then I got started and got out and got down and got different places. For two years you did that? Yeah. My goodness, that's sort of a traveling dentist. Um, yeah. it had, and I had, didn't have any automobile. I didn't have any automobile in that day. Well, well how'd I, you get around? I, I, I rode to Kenton with a mail hack back. Carried, I had carried a little tool with me and a thing to pump with, you know, work the hand. Uh -huh. So by side, and by side, my office was in the in the uh, front of the hotel. It's in the front of the uh -huh. hotel, and at Canton, Oklahoma, my office with a dinner with a doctor in his office. Hmm. And I take my thing that I pump with my feet, you know, and my feet. Traveled two years that way. Was that a, a drill? A yeah. What did I, you? We didn't have any anesthetics those days. That's what I was going to ask you. No, I had, to, <laughs> I had to do that without it. If, if uh, the doctor had a set of arm or something like that, he'd call me. No abortion or anything, he'd call me to help, hold, help with the anesthetic. And then if I had to have, to have a teeth extracted and people had to have chloroform, I, I'd call him to come up and do it that for me. That's how we got along. And you so, used chloroform. Yeah, chloroform and ether, either one. Then and later on, we began to get, took a long time to get anesthetics that we could use. But after I got out of school, I took numerous postgraduate courses. And I became a real good dentist, if I do say. Well, I can believe that. Where did you take those those postgraduate courses? Were they in St. Louis, too? Or no, did you go no. somewhere else? My postgraduate courses was held in Held them, we held them yearly with the dental, dental organization. I see. We'd have, we'd have those, and I'd, I'd go to all of them. At that I time, to learn. at that time, like 1919, 1920, was there a state dental organization? Oh yes, what? yes. I belonged to it right off the bat. Then I, I stayed at Sealing for two years, and then I was going to get out and go somewhere else. And I followed down at Grandfield, Oklahoma, I had an office, and he wanted dentist and uh, I went down there and took and helped him took what a few instruments I had 
And uh, I, I stayed with him for two or three years. I've forgotten how long. Anyway, he wanted to quit. So I, I paid him. I forgot how much for his office. He left. I stayed in Granfield. Not eight years, nine years. And then I moved to Clinton, Oklahoma. And I always took a part in the in the uh, in the uh, welfare of the town. And I just always come to things like that. Down there at Granfield, I had a good practice, and I was a uh, what I was elected official on a under city manager form of government for nine. And I, I was there eight years as the manager. We got down there, and they was out of water. And uh, the light plant, the ice plant, wouldn't work half the time. Now this is at Clinton. Down at Granfield. Oh, I'm sorry, Granfield. Okay. Tillman County. Tillman. Okay. And uh, and I understood you were right to say that you were city manager down there. No, I worked under city manager. I, I was elected to ma a, a, a member of the city manager form of government. I see. Okay. Okay. And uh, that's when we tried to get better. Get, we had the, the, at that time. Granfield had had no wooden pipeline leading up five miles from Red River. It was leaking. And they was out of water all the time. And the ice plant, the uh -huh. light plant, it's no good. Half the time I couldn't practice. So we got out and we bought land. We put down the airlift wells for nine miles from town. We bought the, got the right of way to get to town. And uh, we got good wells and lots of water. So we're going to have pavement dance to celebrate. We put in 13 blocks of, of cement paving. And uh, while I was getting ready for it, I was on the committee for doing it. There's three preachers come up to see me. I thought they was going to cuss me that got so mad because we'd have a dedication for all that work we'd done. Oh, they was mad. Why? Well, they didn't want us dancing. They thought it was oh, all the in the world. Oh, Free oh, preachers, I see. see. I see. Oh, goodness. But, a lot of things like that happened to me down there, and then I, I, I went, the oil field was at Bert, Bert Burnett across Red River, uh -huh. mm -hmm. played out, and then I had to leave. So I started to go to Chickasaw. Coming back, going over there, I had a wreck and hurt myself, and I couldn't leave then for another year. I'd already made arrangements to go to Chickasaw, but I went back to Granville and stayed in that for a year. Then I moved to Clinton, Oklahoma. Was there a lot of, of uh, trade. There must have been from Burt Burnett, from the oil fields around Burt Burnett, across the border. Trade, yes, you bet. Right field booming for a while. Sometimes people paid me with gold coins. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And they, and uh, I had a nice practice there after I looked down there. It, but things co come down. I had to get away, so I went back. To, went to Clinton, Oklahoma. Doctor up there wanted me to come up. Wanted me to meet him at the sit. Oklahoma State Dental Association. He wanted me to come out there and practice him. That's where I went. And I, I, made, I did a lot of work out of Clinton, too. I want to just backtrack just a second. I want to ask you, long about 1919 or 1920, when you got out of, of uh, dental school and you were practicing, if you had a patient who came to you with an abscessed tooth, what would you do? What was the, the, the procedure for an abscessed tooth then? There's nothing to do but take something, take it for pain, that was all. Whatever they take for pain. Aspirin mostly. That's about all you had, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wondered because I know that long about that time antibiotics were not. Oh, we didn't have. have we didn't have any. No, no kind of medicine like we got today at all. Did you ever pull those teeth? Did pull. Did, did you ever pull those teeth? Not when there was you know, acute, acute abscess. I wouldn't. I'm afraid to stir up too yeah. much. I just. I was just curious about that. A lot of time What's we, the difference? A lot, a lot of times we lanced it without any interference. That's the boil, they're swelling a lot of times. To drain it. Mm -hmm. I was just curious about the differences in what they do now and well, what you are, were able well, to do it, then. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable what we have today and what we had then. But right now, since I've been, I've quit in 1979. Since then, I couldn't go in today in dental offices and go to work because I wouldn't be prepared for the way I had to do today. Dentistry just. We had associations. We just went to town, in Oklahoma. Hmm. We'd had lots of postgraduate courses, lots of meetings. I, can, I, I really, uh, I'm not aware of that. I'm glad to know that. 
Uh, how long did you say you were in Clinton? Did you practice in yes, Clinton? Yes, I went uh, from 1929 to 1952. Oh, you were there a long time. Oh. From 29 to 52, that's a lot of years. 1952, I moved to Wilberton. Or to Wilberton. You just covered the state, didn't you? <laughs> I covered the state, I'll tell you, when I was with the water board. God, I, I started all tell me about that. When did you start with the water board? I can't remember now before that at Clinton, through the Dust Bowl days, uh -huh. and all that back time. I was, uh, I was in everything that we was doing those days. I was with everybody, I mean, all kinds of things. So there before I went, yeah, before I went to. Yeah, to. Long about um, 1950, long about the Depression, you must have been. You were in Clinton yes, during the Depression. Yes. And I was very, and I, and I, I was. I was chairman, I was president of the Chamber of Commerce, a member of the Chamber of Commerce. And we I'm going to turn this over just a second. I don't want to miss any of this. Okay, I just want to be sure I didn't miss anything. All right, I'm on Chamber of Commerce. I was president. The secretary of the Rotary Club. We had 100 members, and I was very active in the days when we had uh, the terrible, what do you call them? Dust storms and the yeah, dust storm. But oh. that's because I'm so old. See. <laughs> uh, depression. Okay. Days depression. We didn't have banks that closed. We didn't have any money. A lot of people didn't have any money. One time, uh, during that time, the postmaster from Hydro came up to the office to have a tooth pulled. And he had a $20 bill. I had, I had the most money I'd ever seen for a long time. We didn't have any money. We I just, can imagine you didn't. Did, you know, did patients bring you things in trade? I mean, like... Oh, they do that all my, all my life. They've done that. They did not so much in recent years, but they used to. Oh, yes, yeah. They were very nice to me. They did that I always a had lot nice, during I always had nice practice. Oh, every place I've been. I didn't get run out of any place. <laughs> oh, I hope not. But <laughs> for me to sit here and tell you all the things I've been in, I don't know whether you could take it or not. Oh, mercy, I think I could. Um... I've done so many things. What is, just to, just to ask you, what is the the most, uh, well, let me see, I don't want to say the most dramatic, but what is the most prominent thing you remember about the Depression when you were in Clinton? Well, seeing the people going to California, they were walking, the railroads was full of people. And uh, they didn't have anything to eat. I was even a member of a, one of those committees that works at night to keep people from robbing stores. I was on the night committee on that. Uh, women, people, run off and left their homes, left their farms. Later on, I was with the government again when I got out. Uh, later on, I went up and we helped revegetate a lot of that place where those folks had run off. They just run off and left their homes up around that north part, part of, northwest part of Oklahoma. Well, I know Cheyenne, a, Oklahoma. a lot of people did leave. So apparently there yeah, were and, a lot of people we had, Clinton. We had, we had soup, the soup places fixed all along the road to help people out. I remember the doctor next to my office one day, he said, I want you to go with me. I've got a sick man out in the boxcar. I went down there with him, and he was one of those men that had been going. And he'd been in there a long time. He was dead. Magus was dead. He just about dead. And yeah. that was one of the things that I remember that wait, so things were so bad. He was so, a, a hobo? Yeah, he, he was a hobo, as far as we knew. He, he, he died the yeah. next day. He's too far gone. There were a lot Boston. of hobos around Clinton? Hmm? 
There were a lot of hobos around Clinton. Oh, they're going clear across the country, from West, from West to Oklahoma, clear on through. Hmm. And they did have soup lines and yeah. bread lines and things yeah. like that in Clinton. We had a soup line, yeah. And then I go, we come on with the what, what do you call the plan that we started with. Come in, I was in on that. We built when we. The WPA? People jobs. Yeah, WPA. WPA. I got in on all of that. And we built a lot of buildings, and we got them built. It was a good thing because and we needed more, and they wished, and I, they didn't put on, they, they wished later they let's listen to them. When I began to get out, well, the government had to get out in these small towns. No small towns had any offices. We already had some stone buildings built out there. But the, where the boys had built it was on the the uh, CCC? CC camp. Mm -hmm. By the way, I had one of those named after me. Oh, where's that, sir? That church at Clinton. Camp Oklahoma. Church at Clinton. I sure want to make a note of that. That's one of the greatest things I ever did. One, I had two, I had a bro, a bro, two brothers, no, one brother that went. He wouldn't have been around anything if he hadn't gone. But years later than that now, I was in Atlanta, Georgia at a National Soil Conservation Bank. An engineer walked up to me. He said, aren't you Dr. Church? And I said, yes. He said, I was in your CC camp. Maybe feel good. Jesus. Oh, that was, that's the greatest thing. And I want people to do that now, today. I'm asking them to. You know, I bet uh, there's quite a few of them around. You know, there's a state organization now. Actually, it's national, but there's a state chapter, that national organization, of all the men who were the boys who were in the CCC, all the Oklahoma boys. I was to one of their meetings the other day, a while back. And they yeah, had one in the park. Uh -huh. They're very active and they're very interested yeah. in getting these people who were in the We've CCC. We've got people there at Wilburton that was in the CC camp, they're just greatest citizens in the world. They, oh, they make good citizens. It was great. We ought to have them again. We need them now. I think it's a good idea. And I, and I'm raising hell with the governor now because they don't get out and take these streets out of penitentiary and put them out. I'm right, I'm right now, I'm writing to all the governors of the United States and their legislatures. I want them to get these people out of the penitentiary and these people that's out of work and these boys and girls out in the conservation work. And I'm writing letters about that right now. Well, good for you, sir. You're a good citizen. Let me ask you, uh, which we didn't, uh, I didn't ask you a while ago and I meant to. Uh, are you married, sir? Uh -huh. Are you married, sir? Yes, but never had children. When did you marry? When did you get married? 1922, I believe it was. My wife passed away in 1984. She was a hometown girl. From Sealing? Mm -hmm. What was her name, sir? Christine Bush. You have, uh, I, I'd keep you here with me. We're going to have to talk to you a lot. <laughs> We're going to have to talk I, with you if again. If you get too tired of my focus, then I'll come back because I'm going to stay up here a week. Oh, you're going to be up here in town a week? Yeah. Well, now, the last part of this week, where do you live, sir, now? Where do you live now? At Sealing, at uh, Wilburton. At Wilburton? Yeah, that's where I live now, okay. Wilburton, Oklahoma. Yes. I've been down there since 1952. Well, I've got a lot of questions here I want to ask you, so I want to be sure and get your address in case the, re the latter part of this week, you know, is Thanksgiving you know, and we I, won't I be would here, be glad so. to give you all the time you want if you want to tell what, because everything I've ever done was for kids. Well, we certainly want to get future. into that. I had a hard time getting along, and I, my brother and sister did too. And I, I, right now, I've got a Lloyd E. Church Foundation at Eastern Oklahoma State Dental uh, State College. To where the girls can, or boys can study dentistry or anything that can, pertains to natural resources. I think that is just wonderful. And you, you're just a, a, a wellspring of information, and I don't think we're going to be able to cover this in an hour, an hour and a half. Well, We've got a lot of things we want to talk to you about. Let's let me come back. Well, I'll tell so you what. So my sister won't have to wait so long. All right, I'll tell you what. Let me holler at Joe and get him in here. I don't know about the rest of this week. As I say, Thursday and Friday, they're Thanksgiving. So we won't be here. We won't be working. But it might be a good idea for us to come to you in Wilburton. We can do that. Oh, well, that would be fine, yes. 
If you'll hold, just a second, let me see if I can get a hold of no, Joe. Just I'll, a minute. This is just marvelous well, I've got, information. I've got uh, 13 cubic feet of my work over in this building over here, this big building. It was over there a while ago. 13 cubic feet. Well, we need to go over there and look and see what and that then I've is. I've got uh, the rest of my works in Staffs of Arkansas where some people's getting ready to put it in television. Oh, what, uh, what kind of a project is it? I mean, what? Well, they, they took pictures of me and, and a lot of things, and they, they, they do work for television people. Uh -huh. Josh Brock and so on. Oh, my goodness. They took a whole bunch of my stuff home with them the other day. Scrapbooks and everything else. I'll be sure you get it back. Okay. Just a second. Let me, let me grab Joe here just a minute. I, think he, I saw him come in, but I think he must have already gone out again. Let me turn this thing off. Uh, I'm, I'm staying with my sister. Okay. Well.